Okay, you've got a great research question, but now how do you turn that into a study? How do you design it? That's what I'm going to show you in this video. Hey everybody, I'm Lee Hall from teachingacademia.com and I'm all about giving you the tools you need to navigate academia to make your best impact. If you are new here, welcome. Today we are going to be talking about how to design your research question. So let's say you have your killer research question, you're ready to go. But how do you think it through to make sure that it is well designed, well thought out and well planned so that you can execute a great study? We're going to switch over and take a look at some slides that I've developed to guide you through this process and show you an example. So let's go have a look. Okay, so what I want to do here is show you how you take a research question and design it, right? And execute a study with it. And what I've done here is, first of all, I've given you a research question. Uh, this obviously, this comes from my own work, so that way I can talk to you um, and sort of show you how my thought process works. Uh, and so this question is, how do students' discussions about text and comprehension strategies look similar and or different based on their identities as readers and their reading abilities? Okay, it's got a lot of jargon in it, I get that. Um, basically what this was is this was a, a two month, three month study, excuse me, three month study with middle school, sixth grade students in, so, in a social studies class. Their teachers were giving them reading instruction, teaching them specific strategies to use to help them understand social studies text. And students were having discussions. And what I wanted to do was I wanted to know, are they using these strategies? Okay. And if so, how, and how is that reflected in their discussions? But I wanted to know if there were similarities or differences based on how students self-identified as readers, meaning if they saw themselves as being really good, average, or poor, and their reading abilities, meaning um, according to a standard assess standardized assessment, did a standardized assessment say they were really good readers, really average readers, or really poor readers? Because how we see ourselves and how we get measured on tests doesn't always line up. And uh, I have a citation here at the bottom. I'll include this in the notes in case you're interested. That's where you can find this full study if you want to take a look at it. So basically, um, as we get into this, I want to point out the very bottom of this slide. I have written my research question again, right? So it's there for reference, okay? To get information about my question, right? So I've written this question. How am I going to answer it? Okay, so I want to know something about their reading abilities, right? If how students are talking about texts and comprehension strategies. Does that have anything to do with whether a test assesses them as being, you know, above average, average, or poor in terms of reading? So I know I have to give them a reading assessment, right? That's the first thing. Um, I also want to know how students see themselves as readers, right? Do they see themselves as being really good or just okay or poor? So I know I'm going to have to assess that, right? So I'm going to have to assess their own self-efficacy, their beliefs or understandings about themselves. Um, we're going to have some instruction going on with this. Teachers are going to be teaching them comprehension strategies and strategies for discussion. So I know I'm going to have to observe the teachers, right? And I know that's going to require me. I'm going to want to audio record those lessons, um, you know, in case there's any confusion about what happened in case something got missed. I know I'm going to want to design a checklist to make sure that there is um, efficacy to the intervention going on, what's happening, how long are things, different components happening for. And then of course I have at the very beginning of my question, how do students discussions about text? So I know I'm going to put have students having discussions for this study of a small group discussions. So I know I'm going to have to collect some data from students, small group discussions. I'm going to have to audio record it. I could video record it. Um, video requires an extra layer of IRB, or at least for me, it did at the time. It wasn't a super big advantage to doing that route. So we went the audio recording route. So once I've sort of mapped out, you know, here are my data sources. Now I have to think about, you know, there's things I have to think through about each one. So for the assessments, for the reading assessment and the self-efficacy assessment, how often am I going to give these? Well, this was a 12 week study, so I don't need to be giving it three times. I can just do a pre and a post. If this had been a longer study, if it had been six months or eight months, then I would have done like a pre, a middle and a post. But for something this short, 12 weeks, pre and post is, is plenty. Um, when it comes to observing the teachers, how often am I going to do these observations? So I came down to twice a week per classroom. There were three classrooms. Um, but then once I say, okay, I'm gonna do this twice a week, does it matter? 
what two days a week? Like, how do I decide what two days a week? So again, I have to think about my research question here. The answer to this is yes, it does matter. And of course, for observations, most of it is always going to matter when you go in. So what I decided was that um, what happened is teachers were teaching comprehension strategies. There was a cycle that they, they went through, an instructional cycle, a framework, right? Do one, do two, do three, repeat um, with something different, but follow the same framework. And so I said, well, the first day of each instructional cycle, I need to see that for each teacher, right? That needs to be observed because that's the day that they're giving reading comprehension instruction. And that's really important. I need to make sure everybody's teaching it the way they're supposed to be teaching it. Okay. Second, I said, well, let's um, pick a day when students are either going to be reading text or they're going to be writing or they're going to be discussing. And I had research assistants. So what research assistants do is we just you know, for your second observation, the first time you did it, you saw students when they were assigned to read. The next time you did it, you saw students when they were assigned to write. And then the next time you did it was when they were discussing and then you cycled back through. So that way we're seeing students do all three of these components, okay? We're getting at least some observations in of all three components. And then I had to decide, because I know that students are gonna be having small group discussions, how many are they going to have? So, um, I, I had this instructional cycle. Discussions occurred at a certain time point in, in, you know, in the cycle. So it's obvious um, as to when the discussion is going to occur. But the question is, how, how many times we're going to go through this cycle? So we went through the cycle 12 times. I ended up with 144 discussions, each lasting about 15 minutes. I could have gone more. I don't think more would have been better because... I'm pretty saturated with data at this point. 144 discussions times 15 minutes is a heck of a lot of data that somebody's got to analyze, transcribe and analyze, right? So you have to think about it in terms of managerial aspects. What can you reasonably manage? And what do you, how much do you reasonably need? I probably could have gone a little bit smaller. I probably could have gone maybe 10, um, you know, small group discussions shaved a little bit off. I wouldn't have wanted to go much smaller than that because I want enough data that I am somewhat saturated so that patterns are emerging when I get to analysis and students have had time to learn these instructional, um, what they're supposed to do and they, they understand how, you know, what kinds of things they're doing and the expectations and what it is that they need to do. So that's how I think about taking a research question and walking it through the design phase, thinking about what kinds of data I need to collect, how often, um, and when, and always going back to my research question. Whenever I get stuck, I go back to the research question and think about how something is or is not answering my research question or what for my research question I have not collected data on um, that would allow me to answer it appropriately. All right, so thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe so you can catch all of my videos. And if you need help designing, um, learning qualitative design, I have an introduction to qualitative research course. I will put a link for that to you in the show notes. Um, feel free if you have any questions, ask me about it in the comments. In the meantime, head on down to the comments and let's talk about designing research studies. If you want to, you know, float some research questions out there, get feedback on them, talk about data collection. Um, any kind of challenges, successes that you have, let's talk, let's collaborate, let's support one another on our academic journeys.